Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here for another horror and thriller wrap up. Although as soon as I'm saying that, I'm starting to think that I only have horror to talk about today. So hopefully that's all right with the all of you. And in terms of books, I got a lot of new releases that I got to, as well as a book that I should have hated and DNF'd, but I ended up totally loving. And so I have a really good underhyped recommendation for you all. Hopefully you'll stick around and find some to add to your own TBR. Let's get started. First, let's start with new releases and yes I finally got a chance to read Manhunt by Gretchen Felker Wilker and this is a post-apocalyptic horror novel that is set in a future where there is a virus that targets those with higher testosterone and we follow two trans women that are going about trying to survive. They are attacking these beastly creatures that are being transformed from the virus and they are also collecting the balls of these creatures because they are trying to help to find a cure. And and this book, I will say, is probably especially scary to those of you with testicles or balls because this book is very ballsy and it definitely goes there. It's very gruesome and isn't afraid to be vulgar and grotesque and disturbing at times. And so if you like those elements, if you're up for that, this book definitely starts off with a bang and it really doesn't stop. I will say it's fairly action-based and it's very character-focused at the same time. What I did not love about the story is something I knew going into it and that's the fact that I don't particularly love post-apocalyptic fiction. And so I went to this book not being sure if it was for me but I was hopeful because of the fact that I really love and appreciate queer horror and I do think especially trans representation is not something I see enough in fiction let alone in horror and so I very much appreciated those aspects in this book. It has a lot of really good conversations around the challenges that come about both like physically, emotionally, socially and you get to really see some great own voices representation in this book and I really did appreciate that because I'll admit that it's not something I'm overly not familiar with but it's not something that is very personal to my close intimate friends and family and so I really enjoy or appreciate that exposure but in terms of a story it's still read like a very classic post-apocalyptic piece of fiction and that's just not a kind of story that I find overly fascinating. It was just very tropey it went through all of the usual markers of post-apocalyptic fiction and I just didn't get overly attached to the characters of the story. So again, it's one, I completely appreciate this book. I think it's really important that it gets published. And I know for other readers, especially own voices readers, I imagine this book could be really, really powerful. But for me, it just wasn't very immersive. But again, I'm glad this book is out there for the readers that will get so much more out of this story. Next up, we have The Wakening by J.G. Fiarty. This is a book that I received from Flame Tree Press. And this is a possession story, which you might know is one of my favorite genres. So in comparison to the last book, this one was definitely much more up my alley. It follows a priest who years ago performed an exorcism and the demon that he attempted to exorcise is possibly seeking revenge on him. So this book is told over multiple perspectives, over multiple points in time, and we get to see the events as the they escalate. I am someone, as I just said, who loves possession stories, who loves exorcism stories, especially when they have that Catholicism bent, which is my personal background in religion. And so I really enjoyed the setup to this one. I really like the priest who I thought was very relatable and likable and is very much aware of the problematic aspects of his religion and the institution that surrounds it. So I thought that it was a really easy book to get into. It was very fast paced and I will admit that as it went along, I lost a little bit of my drive or love for the story but again if you're like me if you just love possession stories this is definitely one you'll still want to check out. I don't think it's the best possession story I have read but it was still a possession story which made me really enjoy it. I flew through it I think in one day and again very easy to get into and just some really creepy moments some really gruesome moments and I gotta say I generally enjoyed it. Next up we have The Ghost Tracks and this is a book that I've received from um, Ink Share. This is a young adult horror book, although I do think that it has a lot of all ages appeal. And in the story, we follow a young man of Latino descent who is trying to make money to help out his grandmother, who right at the beginning of the story, we find out, is suffering from cancer. And so in order to help pay for her treatments, him and his friend go about starting a paranormal investigation business. And while terrible things ensue, the main character has some supernatural powers that works into the story. And 
I enjoyed this one. I will say that I'm not a huge fan of paranormal investigation narratives, like it's not something that I seek out by itself, but with the main character being very likable, I think that he becomes very sympathetic right off the bat because he's not doing this to get rich, he's not just doing this for the fun of it, he's really doing it to help his family out, so I liked him right away. And I also enjoyed the fact that this is known voices story and so it really brings in a lot of cultural aspects which I always find to be really interesting. So I'd say it was a solid young adult book which again for me is not something I always love but this one kind of avoided the usual traps of like you know triangles of love and all of those things that normally make me cringe. So instead this one just felt like a really solid story that just happened to have a younger protagonist. Not overly scary but just a lot of fun as compared to Fear Street and I definitely do understand those comparisons. So if that sounds up your alley another one you might want to check out. Now switching over to Backless Horror, I want to talk about The Delicate Dependency by Michael Talbot. And this is actually a vampire story, which for those of you that have watched my channel for quite a while, you know that I don't typically like vampire stories. So the fact that I picked up this one on my own, I didn't have it as a review copy, it wasn't part of my patron book club, probably should have been a huge mistake. I was flipping through a bunch of books, it's one of those moods you get in, or at least I get into, where I have trouble finding some to read, I'm not really sure what I want to pick up, and nothing's really grabbing me. And then I picked up this book. I'm sure that one of you subscribers recommended this book to me before, so thank you. Please identify yourself because I can't find the comment, but I really enjoyed this one. The basic setup is that we follow a doctor, or specifically a virologist, who is working in his field. He is trying to develop different vaccines, and within his work there are some complications, which I won't get into for spoilery reasons but he ends up getting tangled into an accident that involves a man who we recognize because he saw this man years ago and thought he was an angel. Now he is helping this man out and he ends up staying in his house, getting to know his family. Something terrible happens and the daughter is put into danger and the man who is possibly a vampire is to blame. I want to be kind of vague on the plot because while all of this is explained on the back of the book, some some of the events don't happen until much later into the story, so I kind of want to leave it vague. The basic setup is that we have this doctor who is fascinated by this beautiful man who just appears to not be quite right, and it's very clear from the get-go that he is a vampire, and we get to follow the story as it evolves. So I will say that I really like this one, and I'm not quite sure why this vampire book worked for me when so many others don't. I will say that the vampire is not overly scary. He he isn't exactly a monster or seen to that degree as some of the more classic vampire stories where they're just a ferocious creature. Instead, this vampire is a little bit romanticized, but what I mean by that is again that he is seen as an angel-like creature and is very beautiful. But because the main character, our doctor, is a straight man, there is no romance that really ensues. Instead, he's just fascinated by him. And again, for me, what I also think works for this book is the fact that it's very much centered around the science of the doctor's work dealing with viruses and vaccines. Because while of course the vampires lean into fiction and fantasy, so you have those elements and that mystery that definitely stays within the book because you're just fascinated by this other man. But at the same time, a lot of the vampire lore is grounded or looked through the lens of science, and I really like that. It kind of gave me vibes of I Am Legend, kind of that same idea where you take this fantastical concept and then you try to puzzle it out with common human logic and I like that a lot because it felt very relatable. I thought the characters were just very complex, they were morally gray, they made mistakes, and overall I just thought it was a really captivating story and that is I guess why perhaps people love vampire stories so much is because again this doctor was fascinated by this vampire and I admittedly was fascinated by him too and then the story gets into some amazing vampire lore. I was fascinated by the history that is drawn out and overall just thought it was really good. If I had one complaint, it's the fact that I didn't completely love how the story addressed those that are of mental disability or lower intellectual capacity. They do use the R word a few times and a few other slurs that I did find to be offensive. I believe it's meant to work within the time period in which this book is set, but it's just something that personally always rubs me the wrong way. But I was able to look over that and still give this book a really good rating because I enjoyed it frankly so much and I thought it was really smart and actually had some really good 
themes and messaging surrounding the story. So overall, I really enjoyed this one. If you're open to vampire fiction, I do recommend it. Again, I don't think it necessarily even reinvents the genre or does something that you've never seen before, but it does it so well and it really made me appreciate vampire fiction in a way that I haven't in quite a while. So highly recommend. Definitely my favorite of the books I'm going to talk about in this video. Next, I want to talk about my patron book club pick for the month of March. The theme that we selected was translated horror and the book that won the vote was Fever Dream. This is a really short horror novella that is supposed to evoke the experience of a fever dream. And I know that it's really beloved, so unfortunately I'm going to share another unpopular opinion here and say that I didn't really enjoy it. For me, it just failed to give me the experience I was hoping for. I wouldn't say it was confusing, but I would just say that it was really hard to focus on the story. I found it just slipped away as soon as the words were read to me, and I just did not enjoy this book a whole lot. And I suppose you could argue that that is what a fever dream is, that you have this experience and then it's gone, you just have a vague memory of it, but that is my experience with this book, but not in an enjoyable way. I wanted it to capture my attention, I wanted it to be confusing in a good way, and it just I just didn't have much of an opinion or feelings about it whatsoever. It actually made for probably a poor discussion in the book club because so many of us shared my opinion and just really struggled to have much of a reaction at all to it. So for those of you that do love the book, please share down below what you love so much about it or guess the experience that you had because that's the experience I wish I'd had with it. I was so excited going into it and unfortunately was really let down. And I also finally got a chance to read Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark and this is a horror novella that definitely leans into the side of fantasy or cosmic horror. Essentially, we follow a young black girl during the time that the KKK were very much alive and well in America, and she describes herself as a bit of a monster hunter because we find out that the KKK are not just terrible people, but also possibly actual monsters themselves. And I really like the premise of this book. I really appreciated a lot of the themes and racial discussions that were brought into the story, but as the story itself, I I did find it to be a little bit thin, which I know is a super unpopular opinion because when this book came out, it was on everyone's best of the year list. And I think it comes down to the fact that I don't really love cosmic horror. I also don't really love historical horror. And at its core, this book just really read like a monster hunting story. And I was looking for something with a little bit more character depth and complexity. And it was just a little bit too action-based for my personal taste because I tend to enjoy, at least these days, I'm starting to enjoy horror that slows down a little bit more. And and this one just felt way too fast and just, just never really stopped in my opinion. Finally, I want to talk about The Book of the Most Precious Substance by Sarah Grand, and this is a horror thriller that I read because it's the same author who wrote Come Closer, which is one of my all-time favorite horror novellas. This book follows a woman who is trying to track down this ancient old book that is supposedly an occult book that involves sex magic and when she potentially finds it, things ensue and the story goes from there. And I will say that I definitely picked up the book because of the author and if you are interested in this book because you loved Come Closer like I did, that isn't necessarily a good reason to pick this one up because it's very different and in my mind just not as strong. It definitely deals with a lot of, again, occult elements, things like that, but I didn't personally find the story to be very interesting. So I would say that if you are interested in this book, it has to be because you're very interested in that premise. I did enjoy the steamy scenes. Those were actually really fun. So it definitely is an adult book, but the horror elements, the thriller elements didn't work as well for me. And I found myself kind of bored between the steamy scenes. So keep that in mind if you decide to pick it up for yourself. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to hear all the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? Or if you've already read them, I'd also love your opinions on them. You can disagree. That is totally okay. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror, thriller, science fiction, and fantasy. You can still help me out by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it around online, dropping a comment, even if it's just a little emoji like a vampire. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss another video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.